Welding is a process in which two or more metal atoms on the surface of weldments are combined to form a whole by heating and pressurizing or using them at the same time. There are many types of welding processes. Common ones include manual electric paste welding, subpaste welding, gas welding, and carbon dioxide shielded welding. Occasionally, some pad slag welding, buried paste welding, and plasma paste welding used in thin parts and fine equipment are seen in the production of pressure vessels. All of the above belong to high-temperature heating melting welding. Other types, such as pressure welding and lead welding, are not commonly used in chemical industry, so they will not be introduced here. Let's first. In manual arc welding, the welding process is carried out by flux providing low-voltage and high-current intensity electric energy, welding sword, base material, and welding tongs through welding cables, which are respectively connected between the two poles of the flux, the welding rod and welding sword on the welding tongs. When the electrodes are in contact, discharge occurs, and the ionization effect is generated. The arc welding rod and the base material melt and mix under the high temperature of the arc to form a metal molten rod that fills the weld. When the molten rod cools down, the welding is completed. During the melting welding process, if the atmosphere directly contacts the high temperature molten pool, the oxygen in the atmosphere will oxidize the metal. Nitrogen, water vapor, etc., which enter the molten pool, will form defects such as pores, slag inclusions, and cracks. Therefore, a protective gas is needed to isolate the air. In manual arc welding, the electrode coating is generally decomposed to produce a protective gas and slag to isolate it from the atmosphere. According to the different coating components, it can be divided into acidic and alkaline. Acidic electrodes have wide adaptability, good arc pattern, and good operation, but mechanical properties and toughness are slightly inferior. Basic electrodes are light, crack-resistant, and have high toughness, but are sensitive to impurities. The arc pattern is slightly inferior. Used for welding load-bearing and pressure-bearing structures, the arc is crucial in arc welding and must be stable during the process. It is a gas discharge phenomenon that converts electrical energy into heat. The arc voltage in welding is low, the current is large, the temperature is high, and the light emission is strong. Manual arc welding equipment is simple, flexible to operate, and has strong adaptability. It can be used in various positions, structures, and various irregular welds. Welding quality relies on the welder's skills. Productivity decreases with long welds, making it ideal for daily repairs and small-scale production. Some special metals and protective plates cannot be welded. The second type is pressure arc welding. Pressure arc welding has two types, melting grade and non-melting grade. Non-melting grade typically uses high melting point wrought iron alloy electrodes, also called wrought iron. In the process, wrought iron splashes to create an arc. The wrought iron itself will not melt and needs to be supplied separately. Dry silk enters the melting pool as filler and uses inert gas as protective gas to isolate the air and prevent the air from chemically reacting with the metal melting pool. The arc burns stably in argon gas, even at low current, allowing easy control of the molten metal pool. The welding process is stable with little spatter, and the plate can also be well formed. The welding quality of Wuji Yahoo welding is excellent, the weld is beautiful, and there is no slag shell. It is easy to operate and has a wide range of applications. Almost all metal materials can be welded. However, Wuji carries a small current, so the welding speed is slow. In addition, the price of argon gas is expensive and the cost is high. The difference between melting and argon and argon is that the welding wire is directly used as the electrode to continuously melt and fill the molten pool. The welding wire is fed through four wheels of wire feeding, the base material and the welding wire are. An arc is generated between the welding wire and the base material to melt, and the arc and the metal pool are protected by argon to perform welding. Melting and argon welding are usually semi-automatic or fully automatic with shielding gas evolving from pure argon to a mixed gas. Compared with argon welding, argon welding has a larger current, a deeper pool, and a deeper welding depth. The speed is fast and the efficiency is higher, but its strong smoke and large smoke are more harmful to workers, so it is necessary to strengthen protection. The third type is carbon dioxide shielded welding. Its structure is very similar to melting and argon welding, except that argon is replaced by carbon dioxide as the shielding gas. Under the high temperature of the arc, the carbon dioxide gas decomposes and absorbs heat, causing the arc column to shrink so that the arc heat is concentrated. The welding wire melts quickly. The melting depth is large, the welding speed is fast, and the efficiency is high. Due to the strong penetration of the carbon dioxide arc, the grinding and pouring can be reduced during work. The production efficiency is significantly higher than that of manual arc welding, and the price of the protector is cheap and the cost is low. The arc heat is concentrated and the heating area is small. 
The carbon dioxide gas flow has a certain cooling effect on the parent material, which can reduce the burn-through and deformation when welding thin parts, and can also reduce the hydrogen content of the weld and prevent cold cracks. It is suitable for mass welding tasks. If the voltage, current, and wire feeding speed do not match during the welding process, the weld will bend, not straight and poorly formed. The arc is strong, the smoke is large, the metal spatter is large and firm, and it is difficult to clean, which affects the appearance of the weld. The fourth type of gas welding is generally only used in occasions without power supply. It uses ethane and oxygen to burn in a certain proportion through welding tools as a heat source to melt wood and filler metal to form a molten pool, until the metal molten pool cools down to form a weld. The welding saw is small in size and flexible in use. Due to the slow heating of the gas welding heat source, the productivity is low, the heat-affected zone is large, the weldment has a large deformation, and the joint quality is not high. During the gas welding process, the heated metal is very easy to synthesize with oxygen in the atmosphere to generate oxides, which cause defects such as pores and slag inclusions in the weld. To prevent oxides, gas welding solvents are needed for welding non-ferrous metals, cast iron, and stainless steel. Gas welding solvent can be added directly to the molten pool or the welding wire. It reacts with metal oxides or non-metallic inclusions in the molten pool to create slag, which floats on the surface, isolates the molten metal from the atmosphere, and enhances welding performance. Finally, two welding processes that may be encountered are briefly introduced. Electroslag welding uses the resistance heat, generated by the current passing through the slag as a heat source. The slag pool has a large resistance. When the current passes through, a large amount of resistance heat is generated to melt the metal sweetener and the base material. After cooling, they solidify and connect. At the beginning, the welding wire is mushy. Solid flux is added to melt it to form a liquid slag pool. When the slag pool reaches a certain depth, the welding wire is sent into the slag pool. The heat generated by the slag is heated by the slag. Resistance heat melts the welding wire, transitioning to electroslag welding, which is typically used for welding thick sections in a single pass. Electroslag welding does not require grinding or pouring for bows of various thicknesses. It has high productivity and low cost. However, the joints are oxidized at high temperatures. The residence time is long, the weld metal is in a columnar structure, and the impact toughness is low. Generally, heat treatment is needed to restore the toughness. Plasma welding evolved from Yugya welding. The arc of Yugya welding is not restrained. As current rises, the arc column diameter increases. The water-cooled nozzle restricts the plasma arc, preventing free expansion and creating a high-energy, high-temperature plasma arc. It is similar to Ujia welding, a water pipe. One has a high-pressure gun head and the other does not. The plasma arc has a strong penetration ability and can weld a 10-millimeter thick stainless steel plate at one time. The weld shape is uniform and the quality is good. It can weld precision parts, but there are more welding control parameters and the technical level of the welder is required to be higher. The following are some common weld defects that should be avoided as much as possible, especially in some load-bearing and pressure-bearing structures. They will directly affect product performance and production safety. Modern welding is no longer just a processing technology. Today's welding technology has developed into multiple 